President Rodrigo Duterte on Thursday, August 26, says he will scrutinize the Commission on Audit if he is elected Vice President in 2022. Sino audit ng COA? Somebody should. It. I will. I will. I will do that if I become uh, Vice President. The COA auditors come up with annual audit reports of the Commission, which can be found on its website along with the audit reports of all other government agencies. Some agencies under the Duterte administration came under fire for deficiencies in their use of pandemic funds. In the same address, Duterte also slams lawmakers scrutinizing pandemic fund spending. Wag ho kayong maniwala dyan sa mga, mga investigasyon, investigasyon. Kita naman ninyo walang nangyayari. Puro lang, uh, we will investigate, investigate. He claims lawmakers are just doing it for publicity. Mapakinggan mo yung mga ibang sinado dyan, meron talaga masabi. After an investigation, one or two or three days, in you hearing, wala na. Walang rekomendasyon, walang dinimanda, walang napriso. Puro postura lang. Several senators on Friday, August 27, advised Duterte to brush up on the principles of separation of powers and checks and balances. Senator Ping Lakson, who is planning to run for president in the 2022 elections, advises Duterte to read about the mandate given to all three branches of government. Senate President Tito Soto reminds Duterte several of his appointees are now facing cases because Senate hearings expose their alleged corrupt practices. Opposition Senator Kiko Pangilinan, for his part, says the Senate won't have anything to investigate if there were no complaints about the Health Department. Former Chief of the Department of Budget and Management's Procurement Service, Lloyd Christopher Lau, concedes it is possible his negligence led to the purchase of overpriced face masks and face shields in 2020. Lau admits his possible lapses Friday, August 27, during Senate Committee hearing on alleged anomalies in the pandemic fund spending of PSDBM and the Health Department. Lau was the PSDBM chief when the office bought 95.45 million pesos worth of alleged overpriced face mask and face shields at around 27 and 127 pesos apiece, respectively. Senator Kiko Pangininan asked him to justify these purchases when the Philippine Red Cross was able to purchase masks at 5 pesos each and shields at 15 pesos per piece. Lau maintains the face mask and shields were the cheapest the PSDBM could find at the time, but later admits the possibility of his negligence in canvassing for other options. And I okay. think um, when you say that there might be negligence or neg we were not able to exhaustively look for um, the cheapest supplier, there might be a possibility given the scenario that we really lack time, that we lack the resources, we lack connection during the time, that might be a possibility. State auditors found that by year end of 2020, there were 484,000 face shields sitting in PSDBM depots. Need more context, clarity, and perspective? Get the full picture with Rappler Plus. With exclusive content and events, you'll get an opportunity to discuss issues with reporters, experts, and featured guests while helping Rappler continue its fearless journalism. Join now. Human rights lawyer Rex Fernandez was shot dead in an ambush while aboard his car in Cebu City Thursday, August 26. According to Cebu City Police, the 64-year-old lawyer and his driver were ambushed at around 4.10 p.m. A witness tells Rappler separately that Fernandez and his driver were on their way home when they were shot along Salvador Street in Barangay Guadalupe, Cebu City. Police say Fernandez died on the spot. His driver, Darby Pondar, was rushed to Chonghua Hospital after sustaining a gunshot wound through the spine. He is now in critical condition. Witnesses say a hooded gunman waited for Fernandez's vehicle to reach the main road before shooting at the right side of the vehicle. After the ambush, the assailant hopped on a getaway motorcycle and left the crime scene going north of Salvador Street. The veteran lawyer recently staged a hunger strike over a disagreement with his condo management, but it was not clear if the killing was related to that conflict. The National Union of People's Lawyers, Integrated Bar of the Philippine Cebu Chapter, and various groups expressed grief over the killing of Fernandez. Islamic State strikes the crowded gates of Kabul Airport in Afghanistan in a suicide bomb attack Thursday, August 26. The attack kills 60 civilians and at least 13 U.S. troops, disrupting the airlift of tens of thousands of Afghans desperate to flee. 
Video shot by Afghan journalists showed dozens of bodies strewn around a canal on the edge of the airport. Islamic State says one of its suicide bombers targeted translators and collaborators with the American army. The 13 American casualties were believed to be the most U.S. troops killed in Afghanistan in a single incident in 10 years. President Joe Biden earlier said the United States had long ago achieved its original rationale for invading the country in 2001, to root out al-Qaeda militant and prevent a repeat of the September 11 attack in the United States. Biden orders the Pentagon to strike ISIS-K, the Islamic State affiliate that claims responsibility for the bombing. After four years, K-pop group Girls' Generation is coming together again in an episode of the South Korean variety show You Quiz on the Block. The episode will air on a South Korean TV network on September 1. A teaser for the episode shows all eight members, Taeyeon, Sunny, Tiffany, Hyoyeon, Yuri, Soo-young, Yuna, and Sohyun. It's the first time the girls are formally coming together as a group since 2017 when they released their album Holiday Night. In the same year, members Soo Hyun, Tiffany, and Soo Young announced they would be leaving the group's agency, SM Entertainment, to pursue solo projects. Girls' Generation debuted in 2009 as a nine-member group, though member Jessica Jung left in 2014. They are known for their songs Into the New World, G, Lionheart, and I Got a Boy.